What's going on everybody? I'm Jory Goodman, The Time Teller. So guys, a couple weeks ago, we took a look at a list of cheap watches that look expensive. You know, some more affordable options that punch way above their price tag. But the number one comment under that video was to take a look at a list of expensive watches that look cheap. So the exact opposite, okay? Uh, again, the first episode was about some affordable watches that look very impressive. They're well made, uh, maybe a bit snazzy. Today Today we're going to be looking at some watches from some luxurious companies. I wouldn't really consider them respected, but uh, very hefty price tags with some very cheap design choices. Let's just jump into it. Have your barf bags ready. It's 1.58 p.m. Let's get down to business. Alright guys, so the first watch on the list is kind of an obvious choice. We're going to get the obvious ones out of the way first. Richard Mille, but specifically the Richard Mille Rambo, also known as the RM2501. When I first saw this watch, I thought it was a joke. Like, I literally thought it was a toy. I think I categorized this watch under the Ben 10 classification of Richard Mille watches. If you want to see what I'm talking about, click up here and watch that episode. But seriously, everything about this watch watch just screams G.I. Joe? Fisher Price? I don't really know what to say. It's a toy. And a very, very expensive toy at that. This watch is priced at 983,000 US dollars. Everything about this watch is incredibly exaggerated. You know, it has that stupid like leveler bubble uh, over by the four o'clock. Um, it has Camouflage everywhere, perhaps the busiest dial I've ever seen. A 50.85 millimeter diameter uh, and only 23.65 millimeters thick. So very reasonable, can slide right under a cuff. That was like a hockey puck. Perhaps the funniest part about this watch is that uh, although it does have that hockey puck thickness, again, over 20 millimeters thick, uh, it's manual wind. Okay, so there's not like an automatic movement in there. There's not a rotor that has to swing around in there. It's a hand wind movement. It does have a tourbillon because again, um, for all your survivalist uh, scenarios when you're taking over uh, some island and going Rambo on the enemy militants, you need to have a tourbillon. Taken directly from Richard Mille's website, developed in collaboration with Sylvester Stallone, the RM2501 Adventure Tourbillon Chronograph attests a desire on the part of Richard Meal and the artist to conquer the most thoroughly hostile of natural environments, truly an orological UFO. This timepiece is, as Sylvester Stallone says, ready for action. Now this watch does have some high-tech internals. The base plate and bridges are made of grade 5 titanium, has a 72-hour power reserve or 65 hours with the chronograph running. And this watch is hyper-limited with only 20 pieces being released. So if you want to get your hands on one and you have about a million dollars just burning a hole in your pocket, um, yeah, buy this Ben 10 hockey puck on your wrist. Next up, another obvious choice, Hublot. Okay, people want to know what my beef is with Hublot and uh, it's it's that they make watches that just look so cheap and uh, their prices tank the second you buy them, but they ask such high prices up front, it's just ridiculous. I don't know why anybody would purchase one of these watches. Uh, the one that really comes to mind is a Baselworld 2018 release. Uh, it's a Big Bang, the Unico Red Magic. Ooh. Again, this is just a huge red eyesore on the wrist. It looks kind of cool and sleek if it were just you know, a plastic toy. I mean, I just, I don't see the appeal of this watch. There are numerous horror stories of Hublot just having terrible quality control. I've heard of people buying a Hublot Big Bang chronograph, taking it out of the box, and the chronograph hand falling off upon the first use. Uh, and you can say, okay, these things happen with watches, you know, anything can happen, mistakes happen, blah, 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 blah. This watch is almost 30,000 US dollars. That is unacceptable. And uh, again, these watches are just designed to be ugly. But okay, let's say you're into red. Let's say you like that red matte black contrast. I get it. Okay, you might think this is kind of sleek. What about this Hublot? What about this Hublot? What about... Ugh. 
See, I could go on and on. There's numerous ugly Hublots, and uh, yeah, it doesn't seem like they're trying to invent or design anything actually tasteful. Uh, they're really, really leaning into this ugly aesthetic, and you actually gotta respect them for it. Hublot is an expert at designing incredibly expensive, cheap watches. Next up, another company I love to hate, USC Nardin. This company, I've always said, is kind of like the high-end Invicta. They make watches that are just incredibly gaudy and grotesque, and uh, they are ridiculously expensive, okay? It's funny, the one release that they had recently that wasn't super large, oversized, and gaudy was literally X-rated. Okay, it was a beautiful uh, collage, maybe a mural, if you will, uh, of some mermaids just... They were just doing things with each other. I don't know. Here's some pictures. I don't even know what we can show you, but here's... You can take a look. Wow. So when they're not making orological porn, uh, they are making things like this. The ULC Nardun uh, Blue Diver. Um, let's see, men's chronograph, 18 karat, blah, 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 blah. It's a chronograph, precious metal, fine. You got some blue splashes in there. Uh, you got some dive uh, texturing, some, excuse me, wave texturing on the dial. This isn't just the only one that's ugly, though. You can say, okay, uh, I'll accept this, you know, blue, rose, gold. Uh, but what about this? Okay? What about this watch? It's got, uh, let's see, the ULC Nardan Gent 46 millimeter Diver Deep. I keep making jokes about Ben 10 or like Yokai Watch or something. I don't know what this is. What are these things coming off the sides of the watches? These look like toys. I'm pretty sure I've seen these on the wrists of like some anime character. I, I know it. And of course, they've got shark watches, so it's just like that initial chronograph I showed you, but instead of waves, it's sharks. Um, man, I would have loved these when I was a little boy. I could have pretended to be some type of superhero. Um, street sharks was a thing when I was growing up, although I was much more into Ninja Turtles, let's be honest. Biker Mice from Mars was also very cool. But yeah, guys, I just, I don't, I don't see the appeal. So the initial uh, chronograph I showed you with that wave pattern, about $21,000 you can find it on the gray market. That was actually the cheapest I was able to find it. And then uh, this other weird one, that, that diver deep, as they like to call it. Man, everything about ULC Nardun is just X-rated, huh? Anyway, that deep dive, uh, I think they call it the Hammerhead 1000 meter, um, because it's not precious metal, or at least this variant is not precious metal, I was able to find it around $12,000. So guys, these are not inexpensive watches, but they look so incredibly cheap. They, they look like toys. That's kind of the, the, the theme here. Okay, so we got ULC Nardin out of the way, Richard Mille, Hublot, all these were kind of obvious choices, right? These are companies watch lovers love to hate. Again, because they're just making a mockery of watch making. But now I wanna to move towards some picks that you may have not expected. First up, Chanel. That's right, when I think of watch making, I don't really think of Chanel, but, uh, when they were releasing some of these J12 watches, a lot of watch journalists were talking about them. So let's take a look. Yep, it's garbage. For instance, the J12 Cruella de Vil, or I'm sorry, uh, J12 Paradox. This looks like cheap, plastic, just gross, throwaway watch. But it costs around $8,000. And this is another one of those dive style watches. It's not a dive watch because I don't even think it has a threaded crown and it only has a 50 meter water resistance rating. Or how about the J1220 with this weird Ed Hardy design on it? Uh, oh, it's a limited edition, so they're gonna charge you over $6,000. Now I know what people are gonna say. It's not plastic, Jory. This is ceramic. Ceramic is very scratch resistant. You don't understand it's super high tech and that's why it's expensive. Okay, that's all well and good, but why do they gotta make it look like garbage? And again, the theme of this episode is uh, expensive watches that look cheap. These are very expensive, guys. These are not cheap watches. Well, they are cheap watches, but 
they cost a lot of money. You see what I'm saying? Now, the one good thing about this specific limited edition J1220 variant is that it does have a 200 meter water resistance rating. So this one does have a threaded crown and uh, you can actually get it wet. Although for around $6,000 suggested retail price on Chanel's website, $6,300, I would just buy a Rolex. Next up, a company I absolutely hate, Corum. Corum is very well known for their bubble series of watches. I have no idea how these got famous. I have no idea how these became a thing. When I first saw a Corum watch, someone showed me a picture of one and I thought it was a joke. I thought that it was literally a toy. And then I saw the price tags on some of these watches. The cheapest I can find some of these bubble variants, 13,950, 9,350, uh, 4,700, oh, that's a more affordable one. Again, 13,950. These are oversized steel watches with a curved, like literally bubble crystal. I don't know who thought these would be worth that money because uh, again, here is one for around three grand. It's a quartz, 44.5 millimeters large, they say, bubble chronograph. So it's a quartz chronograph, hideous, for around three grand. Some of the dials look somewhat X-rated. Uh, some of the dials are just stupid. They have like cards on them. Uh, so if you're a poker player, you might be interested. Uh, some of the dials have really dumb like clown faces or skulls on them. It looks gaudy. It looks just Ugh. Guys, if you want these in precious metals, because they do make them in gold, you're going to be paying $39,000. You know what, Gato, put on some music and um, let's just do a little slideshow here. That wasn't easy for me either, guys. Okay, and last but not least, all jokes aside, kind of, because this last one is <laughs> an absolute joke as well, uh, we're gonna be taking a look at a, a bit of an honorable mention, okay, for two reasons. Number one, this is a ladies watch we're gonna take a look at, and number two, I can't actually find the exact price on these watches, but I know for a fact it's very expensive because it's coming from Frank Mueller. We're gonna be taking a look at a Frank Mueller, uh, let's see, they call it the Vanguard Lady Backswing. They call it the Backswing because this is a golf watch, so you're gonna wear this with your nice little, you know, your golf skirt. I don't know what girls wear. Um, and uh, yeah, it looks literally like a golf ball on your wrist. How cool. It's silicone and anti-shock. Just wear a Fitbit. Guys, the overarching theme in this entire episode is that these watches look like toys, but the companies have the audacity to charge thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars simply because of their brand name. This is terrible. They're not actually giving you anything for that money. These watches, literally each one that I mentioned today, is disposable. So why do I do this? Why do I make this episode ranting about this? Well, it's because, uh, number one, you asked for it, okay? I made the cheap watches that look expensive. You guys all wanted the expensive watches that look cheap. But for another reason, okay, and, and an actual serious reason, I don't want you whoever's watching right now, to get caught up in the brand names. Because it's clear that some people out there, some watchmakers out there, will just rest on their laurels, use their brand name, and charge a lot of money for absolute rubbish. Now here's what I want you to do, okay? Because believe me, there could be numerous installments of expensive watches that look cheap, and this is just gonna be the first one. So in the comment section, please leave me a list of six expensive watches that look cheap so I can look at them 
and I will make another installment of this with some of your requests because I'm sure that I missed a bunch of them and I would love to see what you guys pick. So yeah, leave me some comments. Again, a list of six because that's what I did in this episode and uh, we'll do another installment and um, some of you will get a shout out for sure because again, I would love to see what else is out there and uh, I can't do all of this research alone anymore because it's, I think it's, I think it's damaging damaging me. I'm sick of looking at ugly watches. But I do it for you. So guys, if you enjoyed this episode, if you had a bit of a chuckle, and uh, if you learned something new, then please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already, and hit that join button next to that subscribe button so you can become a certified T3 bot. What is that? Well, it's essentially YouTube's Patreon. You become a channel member, and for $4.99 a month, you get to sleep well at night knowing that you're supporting one of your favorite YouTube channels ever, and also you get six pieces of content a week. That's two more than normal and uh, you get access to the members only discord chat a whole lot of fun and uh, yeah it's just a blast so we'd love to see you there check out all the affiliate links in the description below uh, yeah check out my personal website www.thetimetellershop.com hopefully there aren't any watches that you would consider to be expensive that look cheap you know hope I only got the cream of the crop over there. Like, comment, subscribe, share this with everyone you know. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller. I had a whole bunch of fun on this episode. Hopefully you did too. Always remember, I didn't invent time. I just tell it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.